One of the goals of the Monarch Larva Monitoring Project is to understand monarch survival and the natural enemies that attack them. We're especially learning a lot about parasitoids, which are small insects that live inside monarchs, eventually killing them. If you'd like to contribute to the parasitoid study, what you'll do is collect monarchs from the wild, rear them inside, and then what, record whether they're parasitized, whether they turn into monarchs, or whether they die of other causes. You can also contribute to a study of a protozoan parasite that's known as Ophriocystis electroscura, or OE for short. If you'd like to study OE, you'll need to contact Project Monarch Health at the University of Georgia and get a sampling kit from them. There's a link to this project on our training homepage. Collect the fourth or fifth instars you find while you're measuring monarch density. You can collect earlier instars as well. Just be sure to note that you're doing this on the site description form. You can collect larvae from your monitoring site or other locations. When you collect an egg or a caterpillar, record the date and location of collection and the monarch stage on data sheet three, estimating parasitism rates. Rear larvae indoors and record whether they survive to adulthood, and if not, what caused their death. If you're not sure, you can record unknown causes. If possible, release butterflies at their collection site. When a monarch has emerged, died, or produced parasitoids, record the information on your data sheet and the MLMP website. If you collect them from your site, enter information about them under your monitoring site. If you collect them from other locations, use the link to parasitism from other locations. We'd like to identify the parasitoids that you rear from monarchs or other butterflies or moths. The data sheet includes information on how to send the adult parasitoids to us. You may already be an expert at raising monarchs, but here are some tips that might be useful. Remember, if you do decide to raise monarchs for this study, you'll contribute a lot to our understanding of monarch survival, and you'll also get to experience one of the most amazing processes in nature. You can keep larvae in an aquarium, large jar, ice cream bucket, or another container. The container should be easy to open since you need to clean it every day. It should have a screen covering or holes for airflow and should allow you to see inside. The container should be large enough for the adult to expand its wings when it emerges. It's best if you can track individual larvae fairly accurately. In our lab, we keep them in separate containers. There are three keys to successful monarch rearing. Keep the cage clean, keep milkweed fresh, and avoid extreme temperatures and moisture conditions. Not too hot, not too cold, not too wet, and not too dry. You'll need to keep the cage out of the sun or other hot places since high temperatures can be lethal and many cages act like greenhouses getting very hot in the sun. Cages must be cleaned daily by emptying out the frass, or the poop, and old milkweed. Wash your container frequently, at a minimum every time a monarch emerges in the container, using a 20% bleach water solution. Make sure there isn't any standing water or condensation in the container, as too much water encourages mold growth, can make it difficult for larvae to molt, and can even drown them. The larvae need fresh milkweed every day, It'll stay fresher in the cage if you put a damp piece of paper towel on the bottom of your container. If necessary, you can pick several days worth of milkweed, wash it, and keep it in a plastic bag in a refrigerator. This activity helps us understand monarch survival and parasitism rates, so it's important to provide the best possible rearing conditions. Your larvae may have already been parasitized by naturally occurring parasitoids before you brought them inside. Larvae that have been parasitized by flies will often not pupate successfully, but will hang limply and die, although some flies emerge from the pupa. Fly maggots come out of the host larva or pupa on a silk-like thread and pupate on the bottom of the container. They look a little like monarch frass, so check for them carefully. The adult flies emerge about seven to 10 days later. 
wasps emerge as adults from their host pupa. In both cases, be sure to remove the wasps or flies if there are living monarch larvae in your rearing container. They may mate and parasitize new hosts. If your larvae die from another cause, be sure to remove them from contact with other larvae to avoid spreading disease. Several bacterial and viral infections can be spread from larva to larva, although parasitoids cannot. You've learned about a lot of MLMP activities, and we thought it might be useful to have a quick review of what we do when we go to our monitoring site every day. Or, you can just log in to mlmp.org, create your own home page, and explore away.